Hello. Don't you find in life that the things we measure we find easier to change? Like a checklist to help complete assignments on time. In this video, we will introduce circular indicators in the critical materials context. We will explore circular indicators by looking at governmental and business indicators. Let us begin by clarifying why circular indicators are important in the context of critical materials. In any context, indicators are essential to measure progress. What, why, when, how, where, and who are examples of questions which indicators can address. The important thing is that indicators determine where effort is focused and where money gets spent. Now, let us look at governmental indicators. You can see how comparability with other countries is usually tackled. This is done via statistical officers in a country or a region using their own data. This often links to aspects such as per capita or in financial terms. The EU indicators, which are related to resources, link to regulations or directives, scoreboards or frameworks. In this model, you can see the interaction of the indicators from the Circular Economy Monitoring Framework and other European directives. Governmental indicators can be set based on geographical dimensions. The biggest is global, and the local could be a district in a city. So the aims and goals of a circular economy for the government can include supply security of materials, and there one might see lists of critical materials. Very important is reducing environmental impacts via country-level footprints, measuring CO2, land use and water, for example. Reducing material waste from homes and organisations is important, as is creating new jobs in circular sectors. Globally, governments have committed to reaching UN Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. Effort indicators are about societal activity, and we can see this in including projects, patents, repair shops, governmental circular purchasing, circular research budgets, and company plans or indi indicators. Governments and governmental bodies can develop actions around critical materials, which while they are not indicators in themselves, can provide information around the direction of travel. You see here the European Union has on the left-hand side defined the critical materials list, with red being the highest criticality and dark green the lowest. On the right-hand side, the EU identifies three application areas, renewable energy, e-mobility, and space and defense. Between the critical materials and application areas, there is a list of technologies. This image could be useful when considering critical material indicators. Now we can consider business circular indicators. Like governmental indicators, business indicators can be seen across scale levels. And here we see the scales of product, company and sector. Business indicators are developed to communicate to society about the business, conduct benchmarking or competitiveness exercises, conduct a dialogue with governments, and develop guidelines for reporting or transparency. Business indicators can include how much is spent on circularity projects, circular investments from banks, and other investments. As usual with the private sector, there is more focus on the financial aspects. 
So the main CE indicators, circular economy indicators, be they from governments or from business, do not include critical materials in their measures. In turn, publications on circular indicators do not feature the words critical or scarce, a reflection of the actions of governments and businesses themselves. In conclusion, it appears that the circular economy and critical materials in the context of indicators appear to be uneasy partners. Given the earlier statement that indicators determine where effort is focused and where money gets spent, we have more work to do on circular indicators and critical materials.